There are lots of ways in which it's possible to take a sound within a track that's maybe lacking a little bit of bite or a little bit of power and add that extra quality to make sure that the sound is kind of justifying its position in the mix. And what we're going to see in this video is how to do that with tape saturation. Uh, what I'm going to do is just play this track through and then we'll begin to see which part we're going to be adding this to. Okay, so you can hear long reverb on the end, but also you can hear that we've got a, set of, a second iteration of uh, this loop, but we'll just play it up to that point. So what we've got is some nice sort of rich beats, and we've got um, a, a pad sound that's kind of sitting at the top, and then at the very top of the arrangement here, we've got this sequence sound. At the moment, whilst it's providing a lot of drive, um, it's kind of a bit lost. And part of the reason for that is that harmonically, it's actually quite thin. If I play this sound just by itself, It's not exactly a bass line, it hasn't got a lot of bass content in it, it's providing some quite nice low mid-range drive and it's got some sort of bite uh, a little bit higher than that as well, but one way or another it's just kind of getting a bit submerged into the mix and the way that I'm going to fix that is using tape saturation. Now what I'm going to do is to turn on um, Isotope's Trash let's just power this up and I've actually selected the tape saturation um, effect on uh, here and you can see that at the moment the drive level for this is really low drive is the sort of most uh, sort of dominant parameter uh, within this plugin because what it's going to do is to add tape saturation uh, sort of harmonic content so when you push sounds onto tape quite hard and you begin to sort of drive them into the red what you get are these really nice interesting harmonics that begin to open up and what we're actually going to do is be a bit analytical about this and open up up um, an EQ after the effect as well so we can begin to see just how uh, much more significant the harmonic footprint of a sound can become using tape saturation. So if I go back to the top of the track, let's just put this into solo mode like this, um, what I'm going to do is to increase the drive level and in addition to obviously looking at the waveform as it displays within Trash, the best thing to do is actually going to be to look over here. What's going to happen is that we're going to see first of all the sort of group of harmonics that play uh, without any um, real saturation being added, uh, too much drive, and as I begin to increase the drive level I want you to just watch in particular what happens in the upper mid range and actually into the treble frequencies as well. Here it comes. Okay, so you can hear that obviously the sound begins to distort a little bit, but actually what's really happening is that compared to digital distortions where actually that amount of drive increase would actually produce some really sort of aliasy overtones and compared to other forms of distortion which get which quite get quite howly and begin to sound like sort of guitar um, sort of emulations or guitar amps. What we get with tape saturation is this much bigger harmonic footprint without getting too much of that stuff. Let's just put it back into the context of the track and begin to see uh, how that can affect um, uh, where we are um, in the context of a piece. I'm going to take the drive level back down again and again we'll push it up and begin to increase those harmonics um, and just begin to see what happens uh, compared when this sound is added to the other sounds within the mix.
Now, a sequence sound like this is never going to run the show in a track like this. We don't have any melody. We could put a vocal on this. It's you know, it's there to provide some drive. And this setting around sort of three, three point zero ish, is working quite nicely for me. Let's just compare that to where we were a moment ago. Let's just bypass the effect and just see uh, where we were a second ago. And I'll punch it back in halfway through. Now, of course, part of the reason it sounds a bit more impressive is because, obviously, it gets louder as we uh, push or put the uh, plug-in into effect. But that's okay. I think even at lower volume, with this effect instantiated, because we've got a bigger harmonic footprint, the sound is just uh, making its presence felt a little bit more. So without going overboard and without producing a tape saturation effect, which is really overblown and really totally dominating, you can begin to see that in the context of a sound like this, which is just there to provide drive and power and to push the whole thing forward, uh, tape saturation can be a really effective plugin to reach for. <laughs> 